started the main session. Uh, this is kind of the brief uh, introduction to uh, you, the APCC, and the agriculture sector team of the APCC. Okay, and the APEC Climate Center. Okay, the uh, he already mentioned, but anyway, uh, in 2005, uh, there is a summit meeting in uh, here, Busan. So, um, so they uh, unanimously agreed uh, they are gonna uh, establish a, a climate center for APEC uh, region. So to uh, in Korea, so to um, the for the scientific research on climate variability and changes throughout the APEC region, okay. But um, the initially we uh, our main target for the APEC climate. Uh, um, I'm sorry, APEC region. But last year, the current president, Korean president, the president Park mentioned uh, the Korea government will support the uh, South, the South Pacific Islands through the APCC, the APEC Climate Center. So, um, but unfortunately, she uh, didn't mention. So any salary increase, the APEC Climate Center's uh, steps, <laughs> meaning uh, we have to do more work with the same salary. Uh, that's the, uh, we have some serious problem. Uh, it always works, but um, you never laugh. I, I try to joke, but. <laughs> okay, then uh, please uh, be <laughs> wide open to laugh at my joke. Uh, oops. Okay, um, so um, basically uh, we are doing this on climate science and then um, we, we have some several uh, support program and training programs uh, to mainly target developing countries. Uh, and so, I hope um, my voice is wide enough. Um, so, uh, and okay. Uh, so um, the, uh, mainly the, we support this, the, uh, uh, those steps. The young scientists were some steps from developing countries. Uh, fully support them for three months to under the AP steps supervising. And then um, we currently doing some application sectors. Uh, such as agriculture and water resource and public health sectors. Okay, um, this is the main or original uh, the APCC role. So for uh, for the op uh, operational activities for MME seasonal forecast. So we collect the GCM outputs, the seasonal forecast from um, seventeen institutes in nine countries and issue the monthly rolling six month MME uh, economic forecast. Okay, this is the structure. So we have four department and the, we belong to the climate research team. The climate research department has four uh, research teams that we are, uh, we are here, the climate change uh, research team. So basically, how we can apply those, the climate information to our application sectors. Okay. Uh, this is something, uh, some idea uh, diagram. So which team is really ideal uh, for those application sector or climate change research? Uh, so, um, uh, okay, so basically, some, um, based on this climate information, we need to apply those information to each sector, but the, due to some scale issues or some limitation of data set, we may need uh, something uh, bridge. So um, the, our team has those uh, experts in the same mm, team. So um, I, am, I may say we uh, have some ideal team for the climate change research. Okay, we are in the agricultural sector. Uh, okay. So, um, 
the last um, couple of um, slides will show what we are doing and how we approach those uh, issues to figure out. Okay. So this is the earth we, where we live in, right? But um, we have lots of problems in earth. And um, we try to provide some solutions sometimes or some better strategy to avoid or reduce or adapt or mitigate, right? So um, there are so many processes in land surface or interactions between atmosphere and land. But um, I'm pretty sure these three are very critical to understand those processes or interactions. So energy, uh, water, or carbon and nitrogen, right? So, but those processes are very critical to understand for those. But um, sometimes we have to uh, investigate those processes in several scales or different uh, scale-wise. So um, uh, sometimes if we have, if we want some figure or provide some solution or strategies for regional scale, then we may need regional scale models, kind of. Or if we need really detailed physiological process, then we may need to some planned scales, right? So currently, the APCC uh, are running some guides for global scale model, and GLAM for regional scale model, and the field scale model we use uh, strategy bias model. Okay, this is kind of uh, a conceptual what, what we are doing. Basically, um, similar uh, strategy. So our final goal is um, just provide or solu uh, provide solution to decision makers or stakeholders based on uh, this climate information. So there are two uh, response to climate change, as you know, so adaptation and mitigation. Okay, so uh, next slide, uh, we'll discuss the how we approach, how we uh, 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 approach the some uh, to provide some better solution with multi-scale uh, crop modeling. Okay, the basic idea is um, we just want to use some advantages uh, from those uh, scale models. Okay. So this is the some conceptual diagram for the GAIA's global scale model, and. To assess the climate change impact on rice productivity in uh, Asia Pacific regions, we use the total uh, 32 GCM outputs uh, for the climate change scenario. Okay. And um, this, uh, this, so um, this is the number of uh, the GCMs. So we can see in Cambodia case, so total uh, about 30 of, if we use 29 GCM's output for the um, GAIAS, GAIAS simulate. So 29 out of 30, uh, 32, uh, the GAIAS simulate the reduced rice production in 2020s, even worse in 2080s under um, SP 4.5 as you already expected these things. Even 8.5, we could see some uh, worse uh, result, right? So um, uh, we, we identify that the uh, Cambodia or so Vietnam, the Thailand, uh, those, or Myanmar, those uh, countries are uh, known for some top rice uh, produ producing countries. So, um, uh, we want to see some more detail than global scale to those re uh, regions. So that's we define uh, this Indo-Chinese Peninsula to get more information the under climate change scenario. Okay. So, um, but um, we developed the GLAM rice model based on GLAM wheat to simulate some flooding condition at the rice paddy fields. So. You probably know the rice paddy field has some unique uh, interactions or process or dynamics in each fluxes, 
nitrogen, um, energy, or water. So we adapted, um, I think it's uh, around 2000, to simulate uh, rice paddy uh, processes. Okay. So we applied those model to Indo-Chinese Peninsula. So uh, the uh, under ISP 4.5, uh, 2040s. Okay. So even even Thailand, the, this area may increase without any adaptation. They increase some rice production uh, without any uh, uh, adaptation. But in Cambodia case, most of uh, they simulate, they reduce the rice yield under the climate change. So this is 28th, and it's an 8.5 scenario. So we could see some worse uh, result than RSP 4.5. Okay, um, so um, we selected this Cambodia. See, Cambodia government has some plan to increase their rice uh, export to up to 1 million ton um, milled rice in 2015, if I remember correctly. So, um, and also they tried to expand their uh, irrigation uh, infrastructures. So we selected Cambodia, uh, so especially how this irrigation thing impact on rice production, okay? So we um, simulated some kind of auto irrigation schemes. It's a little bit different than uh, some field practice, but I think that we could see some, some irrigation impact you know, sufficiently, okay? So this irrigation, irrigation uh, those two provinces may benefit the most. So even these uh, 2040s, we still could see those two see uh, those two provinces. So um, uh, we um, decided this cells. This is most benefit from the irrigation to uh, to simulate more detailed process with field scale model, the stretch rice. Okay. So you probably know the, what stretch rice model is very famous and widely used and process-based model, as you know, yeah. So the um, Cambodia government, they uh, distribute two cultivars, basically. So one is San Piedo, the other one is um, usually uh, Garundur. So we selected those two uh, cultivars uh, to get which uh, management will increase or adapt kind of the uh, each, uh, each climate change scenarios. So um, the baseline means the 1990s, uh, 10 years average. So this is government recommendation for nitrogen fertilizer. So 50 kilogram per hectare, okay? So if we apply this much of nitrogen, then we may have six ton per hectare, a little bit higher than uh, some in Cambodia case, but uh, and yeah, this is a, a simulated result. Um, so the 2020s under ISP 4.5, if we apply double nitrogen fertilizer, but still we reduce some, uh, we lose, we lose some uh, rice yield, uh, even the double fertilizer. So we want to see which management will give us a little bit increase in rice yield. So um, simply, if we plant late, one month later than uh, normal, then we may have some increase in rice yield. That's the how I understand these tables. Uh, so the similar, but um, on the ISP 8.5, uh, we couldn't see those increase in rice yield than uh, compared to baseline. So we may need to, another management, or another adaptation strategy to increase rice yield under this uh, climate change scenario. So the other um, cultivars, we have a similar result, okay? So um, yeah, this is, uh, these slides, I just want to try to how we apply these uh, multi-scale crop models 
for some climate change research area. Okay. So um, mm, I hope you were uh, successfully deliver the idea of the uh, multi-scale crime modeling approach. Okay, I think this is the last one.